Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Breezy 60s after some much needed rain, but how long will these comfortable conditions hang around? A change at the top. The Detroit Lions have a new owner tonight as Martha Ford says she's stepping down effective immediately. But we're going to begin with the mayor of Ypsilanti announcing she is stepping down after making a controversial comment at a city council meeting. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 5. Mayor Beth Bathshirt made the announcement today on Facebook. It comes after protests over a comment she made at a council meeting saying she would, quote, be crucified if she voted against any black person or any commission. Our Victor Williams is in Ypsilanti and has reaction from residents over this sudden decision. Yeah, you know, it's believed that Ypsilanti is a city that values itself on the principles of pride, diversity and heritage. So it's not a surprise that some of the more diverse parts of the town had a problem with some of the comments made by the mayor pressuring her to then leave office. It's time for a change. You know, she made a mistake. Put somebody else in more qualified to do the job to serve the citizens of Ypsilanti. Those were the words that go through parts of the city of Ypsilanti as Mayor Beth Basher broke the news on Facebook. She was deciding to vacate her office. This is part of the change. And I, right or wrong, I'm not sure. If that's what has to happen there, then that's what has to happen. This comes on the heels of the now former mayor making racially insensitive comments during a city council meeting sparking hundreds of protesters calling for her job. And if the people of her county and her, or her community were asking her to go, then she should probably go and find someone who's maybe just a touch more sensitive and who's ready to grow and change. Parts of the mayor's official announcement on her Facebook page reads, quote, there is healing to do to ensure that all residents, including black, indigenous, and people of color enjoy full equity in Ypsilanti. That is what I want for our city. I had hoped to participate in that healing process going forward. She said some things that she shouldn't have said. We have to hold her accountable. That's what we teach our kids. So it's a good thing. It's a new day. And we were unsuccessful in several attempts to reach out to Basher to get her to talk to us with our cameras rolling. And so we, of course, are waiting for any type of call back. Reporting in Ypsilanti, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, and we posted the mayor's full resignation announcement on our website. Click on Detroit.com. You can find it in the top stories section. Today's coronavirus numbers now showing us 11 more people in Michigan have died from the virus over the past 24 hours. That comes as 221 new cases of the virus have been confirmed. Also, Wayne County's Health Division today launched a coronavirus antibody testing program. Wayne County employees and residents can go to the drive up testing site at Garden City Hospital for COVID-19 diagnostic and antibody testing. There's no out of pocket cost or pre scheduled appointment. Those who test positive for the antibodies can then donate plasma, which could potentially save lives. Costs of the program are being covered by the Federal CARES Act. Today, federal health officials warned Congress to prepare for a second wave of coronavirus infections coming this fall and this winter, even as the nation continues to battle the first round. They also address the president's comment about wanting to slow down testing. Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us with more on exactly what they had to say. Yeah, Kim and Devin, you know, Dr. Anthony Fauci and the heads of the CDC, the FDA, and the testings are all testified emphatically. They have not been told by the White House to slow down testing. Instead, stressing they plan to do even more to help identify asymptomatic people spreading the virus. None of us have ever been told to slow down on testing. That just is a fact. In fact, we will be doing more testing. Dr. Anthony Fauci says he remains cautiously optimistic about having a vaccine. When, and I believe it will be when and not if, we get favorable candidates with good results, we will be able to make them available to the American public, as I said to this committee months ago, within a year from when we started, which would put us at the end of this calendar year and the beginning of 2021. The experts also emphasized the importance of making sure Americans are vaccinated against the flu this fall. If we get everybody flu vaccine, that's one less virus that could kill 20, 30, 50,000, 70,000, and potentially even be a co-infection with COVID. 
To make testing easier, the CDC has developed a new test that detects two strains of influenza and COVID-19. There are multiple manufacturers, both at point of care and laboratory, who will have this type of test. Fauci testified the national stockpile is being restocked with PPE in preparation for fall, but urged everyone to do their part to stop the spread. Getting back to normality is going to be a gradual step-by-step -step process and not throwing caution to the wind. Now, Dr. Fauci was also asked about students returning to school in the fall. He said some parts of the country may have low enough levels that schools can open in a normal way, but others with high case counts will still need modifications like alternating schedules and other safety measures. Back to you. Yeah, okay, Doc, thank you. And have you noticed your breath doesn't smell that fresh behind the mask? It's an unpleasant discovery many people are making. So tomorrow at 6 a.m., Dr. McGeorge will explain what's really to blame and how to make your mask breathe much better. The state unemployment office has set a deadline to eliminate the major backlog of claims. The agency says all of the unpaid claims filed before May 1st will have a determination by the 4th of July. Uh, no word yet on when claims filed after May 1st will be cleared, but we'll stay on it. Well, after a soggy and muggy morning for many, the humidity has been dropping. Um, wind has picked up quite a bit. Yeah, let's get to Ben. And uh, are we clear to open up the windows, Ben? I think so, guys. I think we're going to have a very comfortable night uh, for sleeping tonight. Give the AC a break because we're going to need it towards the back end of this forecast. But here's where we stand right now. As you take a look at Mount Clemens, there's still some clouds out there, but temperatures are in the mid to upper 60s. Sustained winds there at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. But when you start looking at the gusts, those are getting near 40 miles per hour. Lakeshore flood warning has been posted from now through 4 p.m. tomorrow as those winds are out of the west. So that's mostly for folks on Arsons Island. Still can see some minor flooding there as those winds pick up there. The current gust at about 35 miles per hour across the area. And coming up, guys, we're going to be talking about the very nice conditions, at least during the middle of the week. But we are going to see some heat towards the weekend. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, Ben. Now to some major news coming out of Allen Park. The Detroit Lions have a new owner effective immediately. Let's get out to Bernie, and it's staying in the Ford family, Bernie. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's new leadership at the very top, though. Martha Ford has stepped aside to allow her daughter, Sheila Ford Hamp, to become the Lions' owner and chairwoman effective immediately. We've got highlights of Hamp, and those close to her say she's very smart, very nice. There she is cracking up, which sounds a lot like a daughter of Martha Ford would be. Hamp has been part of the front office of the organization since 2014 when William Clay Ford passed away and Martha Ford took control. No reason given for the change, but it was not help health related, uh, Ham said this afternoon. It also appears Hamp has been in the wings for a while, ready to assume the responsibility. Jamie Edmonds has more on the Lions changing of the guard. Good evening, Jamie. Good evening to you, Bernie. Leadership changing at the top at the Lions organization, staying within the Ford family. But Sheila Ford Hamp said today that she hinted that maybe it won't be the same old Lions. And to the entire Lions organization, I want to say that I'm very excited about my new role. And I look forward to getting to know the organization and staff more fully. That was how Sheila Ford Hamp began her conference call with the media today. Four hours or so into her new role as principal owner of the Lions, she says this has been a long time coming. She grew up around the team and she shadowed her mother for the past six years and learned a lot. I realize <laughs> I have big little shoes to fill. Ford Hamp has grown her knowledge of the NFL overall by attending league meetings for the past four years. Today, she got a congratulatory call from NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. Ford Hamp knows she's an elite company as one of four female owners. My mother really broke the ground for me. I think it's, you know, it's, I look around the NFL and actually, you know, there are quite a few women owners now. So, it's changed a lot. Ford Hamp says she was pleased with this year's draft and that win now mandate is still very much in effect for Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. She says even though leadership is staying within the Ford family, there will be a new voice at the top. And I think there'll be things that I may dive into a little more deeply than my mother or my father would have. You know, I'd like to learn way more about our analytics team, for instance. Um, I know they're excellent, but, you know, I kind of want to get briefed on what they do. 
And she joked that maybe she's better at Zoom than her mother would be. They say they are preparing for the season like they're going to play in the fall. So for no, so far, no word yet on that. And she also made a point to say that she completely supports her players in their right to peacefully protest, and she will support them throughout the season. Bernie, back to you. All right, Jamie, thank you much. So there you have it. We have new leadership at the top of the line. She went to Yale, and she's a terrific tennis player, too. So we're getting to know Sheila Ford Hamp very well, I'm sure, before the season even begins. Kids, back to you. Yeah. And what a strange time to come into it all, no doubt about it. All right, Bernie, more, more coming up from Bernie a little bit later on. Uh, other news today. Today, postal workers across the country and here at home are gathering to send lawmakers a message, and that is to save the post office. You're looking at video from an event here in Detroit. The American Postal Workers Union organized the nationwide action, calling it hashtag save the post office. Many are concerned that without more funding and support from the federal government, the post office's days could be numbered. Uh, the Postal Service is seeking $25 billion in federal aid. All right, there's much more to come. Here's Hank. Phoenix Williams was bullied on the school bus in Bloomfield Hills when he was a kid, taunted and teased simply because he's black. Now, years later, he's talking about that incident, what he's learned, and his message to young people right now. I'm Hank Winchester with that story coming up. All right, Hank, also 2020, of course, the edition was canceled. Now they're hinting at some big changes. New tonight, what we can expect the next Detroit Auto Show to look like about a year from now. Paula. Republicans in Lansing give an important signal to school districts that could really allow them to start actually planning for this fall. I'll explain. 